Well, good morning. Welcome to Faith and Healing class. Uh, glad you're with us this morning. Uh, this is the class that we feed our spirit, the anointed Word of God. And uh, as a result, our faith grows stronger, and uh, we learn how to overcome, and uh, we are overcoming. Amen. Glory to God. I'm Eddie Storino. I pastor the church here at Abundant Grace Church, and uh, and we're doing what the Lord has asked us to do. We're very thankful for the truth and the revelation that we are being able to see and receive, and it's because we, uh, we have put a great emphasis on it, and we desire it, and we value it. And so the Lord has been gracious to us. He's helping us, and uh, so we're glad you're with us today. Uh, as always, the Bible is our textbook. Uh, it's God's Word. It's living. It's powerful, and uh, you can never get enough of it. So make sure you have your Bible, it's something to take some notes with as we prepare our hearts to receive from God's Word. Amen. Faith does come by hearing. And uh, if you didn't catch yesterday's uh, message in, in teaching, uh, you can go back. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, AGC TV One. You can access that from our webpage, www.abundantgracechurch.com. And right on our homepage, there's a link uh, with our YouTube link that'll take you right to our channel. And uh, all of our services, all of these classes, our Sunday mornings and our Wednesday evenings, those sessions, those, uh, those services are there, and they're free of charge. They're a benefit for you, and uh, we would encourage you to go back and listen to it. Yesterday, and we may recap a little bit, but we were talking about God's Word being medicine. And really, uh, the further you, you go in the things of God, and, and all of us together, I believe this is happening to, uh, we see how much more uh, we have a part to play in it than what we have previously thought. You know, we're, uh, as we're growing, we're not the ones throwing our hands up and saying, God, how come you're not doing anything? Uh, we realize that the responsibility to, to act on what we believe falls on us. And, uh, and so we really went into some good, good, uh, good teaching yesterday, revelation, all anointed by the Spirit of God, and, uh, and it has helped us. Some very practical illustrations that demonstrate a spiritual point. And um, I would encourage you to go back and listen to them. And so I'm going to say today, let us uh, prepare to take medicine. Uh, maybe you've already woke up this morning and taken your medicine um, naturally, but God's word is medicine. In the same way a doctor prescribes us medication for whatever ailment we may have, God has prescribed his word as medication for our ailments. And, uh, and so uh, just like we put our trust in medicine when we take it, expecting it to work, uh, we even talk like it's working. And, um, and we do what we're told as far as uh, following the instructions. Uh, we need to have that same mindset, spiritually speaking, and giving God the same honor. If not, it should be more than what we would give. I respect doctors, but God uh, deserves much more honor and respect than any man. And so if he says to do it this way, and here's the medicine that I prescribe, then we ought to humble ourselves and do it. And, uh, and then receive the, the, the effect of it, the effect. And what is the effect? Long, healthy, satisfied life. And to live long, you have to, be, you have, to have some longevity and health to you. And to be satisfied, you have to have some stuff, right? Um, it's the will of God. And we lay hold of it based on our believing it. And we can't believe it unless we've heard it and seen it. And so that's our job, reading the will, being familiar with it, and then trusting him to do what he said. Amen? So we're glad you're with us, and uh, as always, uh, uh, we encourage you, if you're in the area, come and visit us uh, in these sessions, as well as our services. We're in Toms River, New Jersey, 108 Indian Head Road uh, in Toms River. It's Bay Avenue, and, um, and we would encourage you, come out and see us. We'd love to, uh, to visit with you and, and have you be part of what the Lord is doing here. Amen? You know, we are receiving truth. And uh, it's not any person's truth. It's God's truth. And uh, the truth will always be the truth. The truth makes a person free. Sometimes the truth is a hard pill to swallow. But once you get it down, there's freedom. You're free. 
And, uh, and so we are receiving that here in this place. And it's to God's glory that we are. But he honors obedience. And so uh, I would encourage you, obey what the Spirit of God is leading you to do. Trust him, you know, and, and uh, receive the truth that he has for us. So this is a good place to do that. Amen. We'd love to meet you and see you here. Uh, as always, we uh, have um, read and prayed our Ephesian prayers together. Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 3 and also in Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to do that again. And it never ceases to amaze me that every time we do it, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, will give us more insight, show us more things. And, uh, and he did yesterday, and we really were able to expound on it as he gave us the utterance. Uh, but your believing and expecting and being hooked up has everything to do with the utterance that we receive. And so before we go any further, we're going to trust the Lord together. We're going to put our faith in him and trust in him, believing him that as I open my mouth, he's going to fill it specifically with the words that we that he knows we need to hear, that he wants spoken. It's his message, and I want to deliver it accurately the way he wants it delivered. He knows what we're going through. He knows what we're asking. He knows what we need. We have to trust him. Amen? So let's do that together right now. Let's trust him for revelation knowledge this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you now. All of us are in agreement who are watching this and who are part of it here, and, uh, and we're asking you, to fill us with a spirit of wisdom and revelation, an understanding of your word. Father, we ask together, trusting you, that as I open my mouth as an under-shepherd, you will fill it with your anointed words. And your anointed words are powerful, they're living, they change things. When we mix it with faith and trust you, a miracle happens every time. And so we're asking you for that today, we're believing you for it. We're asking for revelation knowledge, for impartations of truth, Father, for confirming things in our spirit, for answering questions that we might have. Father, lead us, guide us, show us things. We trust the Holy Spirit as our teacher. He's our counselor. Counsel us today. Lead us, quicken us, strengthen us, guide us today. Father, most importantly, we say that you be lifted up you be magnified, you be glorified in this. For you deserve all the glory and the honor. And as you're lifted up, may people hear you, see you, and be drawn to you. Father, we love you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, uh, like I said, we have been praying these Ephesian prayers and Colossians, uh, not as a religious rite or a ritualistic type exercise, but... Uh, in faith, praying, you know, you could pray these prayers over your family members. You can insert their name where Paul's saying, I. You put your family member or whoever it is that you're praying for. And do it morning and evening. Do it as often as you can. And you're going to be amazed how the person that you're praying for, praying this over, begins to see light and begins to see it clearly. And, uh, and so uh, this is Ephesians chapter 1 beginning in verse 17, and this is the GW, God's Word translation, and I've changed it and put it in the first person as if we're the ones praying it. So pray along with us, and whatever Bible you have, you can follow along with us. You'll have no problem. And let's pray these in faith. Amen. Expecting to receive some truth and some hope and some light from it. So Paul's here. He's in prison. And he's praying. He says, I pray to you the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Now, if you were praying for someone else, you would say, give so-and-so, whoever it is, put their name in there, a spirit of wisdom and revelation as they come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. You know, God wants us to be confident. But we cannot be confident in something unless we step out in faith and trust what he's saying. Have you ever, uh, you know, it, whether it's starting a new job or, or, or uh, you know, in school, you, you learn, you're learning a new sport. 
You're not confident in it until you begin to practice it, until you begin to trust your coaches and do what they're asking you to do. And it is an amazing how all of a sudden you grow in that and you become confident. But, the, but there's an element of trust. If we refuse to do the, take the steps that our coaches or, or whoever it might be are telling us to do or our teachers, if we refuse to do that, if we refuse to listen to our doctors concerning medication that they've prescribed to us, then we can't have confidence. There's that element of trust, which is faith, trusting God. And, and Paul saying here, I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have. Now, people will say, well, if he wants us to be confident, why doesn't he just make us confident? Well, why doesn't he just save everybody? Why are some people rejecting it? Because contrary to what people think, God is not going to do for us what he left up for us to do. And it's our choice to trust him. And, but as we do, we know he wants everybody to be saved. He, we know he wants us to be confident. How come some are and some aren't? Because some refuse and some believe. Some trust him, and believing is trusting, trusting him, putting your faith in him, and then the result is hope, the result is confidence, the result are these types of things, and it's answers, and it's freedom, and it's good, it's good, but God wants us to be confident, but we have something to do with it. God wants us healed. He already made provision for it. God wants us prosperous. He's already made provision for it. Can we clearly see that if we're not walking in those things, it's something on our end? God's just not going to do it. Well, I don't even like to say that. He already did do it. But our believing it brings it into manifestation, brings it into sight, brings it into the realm where we're living. But it's already his will and plan for us. He wants us confident. I know I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength for me, a believer. You have to be a believer. Not a doubter, not a skeptic. Not a person who's just going to roll the dice and give it a try. That it doesn't work. It works for believers. And then he goes on to say, you worked. He's reminding God, you worked with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life and gave him the honored position, the one next to you, the Father, on the heavenly throne. On the heavenly throne. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, Governments, because that's what we know in this day and age, and all other names that can be named, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him regarding the church. He's in charge of the things regarding the church. It's important to know, and I make that distinction because the evil that's happening on, going on in the world is not a result of God and his sovereignty allowing it to happen. God is sovereign, and his sovereignty causes him to abide by his word. He doesn't violate his word. And he said that, that Satan is the God of this world. But then he also, he didn't leave us helpless. He went on to say, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. And I've overcome the world. Those who are in Christ are not subject to, these, to this realm, to these rulings. As ambassadors, we are. So he's not in charge of the, 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 the demise and the, 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 the death and destruction and the, the fighting and the murder and the envying and all these kind of things. That's Satan, the god of this world. He's only come to kill people, steal from them, and destroy them ultimately. So you put everything under the control of him regarding us, the church. And you made him the head of everything for the benefit of the church. The church is his body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. Glory be to God. That's exactly what he's doing. 
He's filling everything in every way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then our next one that we're going to pray is found in Ephesians chapter 3. And beginning in verse 16. So let's flip over there. Paul continues his prayer. He says, I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit. Inner strength and power through his spirit. Hallelujah. That Christ will live in me through faith. Through faith, not through feelings, because some people will say, well, I just don't feel anything. Well, if you're walking by your feelings, maybe you wouldn't have even got up this morning. Maybe you wouldn't be tuning in. But Christ lives in us through faith, which means he's always there. You keep believing, you'll always be receiving. It's keeping that faith, that switch of faith, in the on position. And as long as it's in the on position, power is continuously flowing to you, but if it gets shut off, it breaks the flow. It comes right to the switch, and that's where it stops, just like electricity in a, in a room. The, the, the power company's sending power to your building, to your house, and just because it's dark in your room doesn't mean that the power isn't right behind that switch. But it's not until you flip the switch to the on position that you get to benefit from that power. Does everyone see how clear that is? We will benefit from this power that's always present if we'll keep the switch in the on position. It'll, it's like always leaving the light on. Glory to God. And we are to always keep our light on. Keep that switch turned on. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so he lives in us through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. This way. With all of God's people, all of us together, the church, I will be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I am praying this so that I may be completely filled with you, Father God. For glory belongs to you, whose power is at work in me. And by your power, you can do infinitely more than I can ask or imagine. By your power, right? That power is present, always. We saw it with the woman with the issue of blood. She said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Power was always there, present. By her moving and acting on what she said is like flipping the switch. And the minute she flipped that switch by, uh, is represented by touching his garment, the power that was there flowed right into her. Friend, the power to meet whatever it is that you need is present right now. You just have to turn the switch on to get the flow going. And as you do, you'll, you'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll bless you beyond what you can ever think or imagine. That's exactly what he's saying here. Your power is at work in me. By your power, you can do infinitely more than I can ask or imagine. His power will straighten your back out. His power will straighten your knees out. His power will uh, renovate your nerve system. His power will straighten and renovate your mind. His power will make new your heart and your organs. His power, that's always present, beyond what we can ask or imagine. But in order to receive it, in order to benefit the power from the power, of a light source, you have to turn the light on. You have to turn the switch on. And speaking and acting on what God said and agreeing with him is, is how the light gets turned on. That's how the switch gets flipped to the on position. Do you believe that this morning? It is truth, friend. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Believe it and receive it. Thank you, Lord, for glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. And then the last one that we'll pray here together, uh, and then we'll get into some, some other things here, even though we're getting tremendous truth right now, um, is in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 9. So flip, go past Philippians, if you don't have this paper and you have your Bible, and turn to Colossians. 
Chapter 1, beginning in verse 9. Paul continues praying here. He says, for this reason, I have not stopped praying about this. I ask you, God, and now praying, this is what he's desiring. This is his craving. This is what he's constantly after concerning the things of God. This is what he's saying. I have not stopped seeking you, desiring you about this thing. And here it is. Here it is. He says, I ask you, God, to fill me, to fill me with the knowledge and understanding of your will or an understanding of your word. Fill me with an understanding, a knowledge of your word. Through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight, wisdom and insight, that's what everybody wants. I ask this so that I will live the kind of life that proves that I belong to you, Lord. This is why. This is what he's saying. Then I will want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. This is how it's going to come. This is how it works. We receive knowledge about him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> I also ask you to strengthen me by your glorious might with all the power that I would need. And it's all the power you need is in him. It's in him. All the power that I need to patiently, to patiently, Endure, patient endurance. Boy, we, we hear about that all the time. Patiently endure everything, everything with joy. Endure and overcome. Endure and overcome. Overcomers come over things. They don't come under it. They come over it. That's why they're called an overcomer, not an over-under. Right? <laughs> we come over over things. We don't come under things. We're not undercomers. We're overcomers. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. See yourself as an overcomer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Patient endurance. Overcoming everything with joy. With joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light which is what you want me to inherit. Thank you, Lord. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness and you brought me into the kingdom of your Son, whom you love. We have been rescued from the power of the enemy. What does that mean for us? That means that we are no longer under his tyranny. We're no longer under his rule. Doesn't make a difference how much he shouts and jumps and screams in your face and commands this of you. You could turn around and say, diplomatic immunity. Get behind me. I forbid you to open your mouth to me. That's what we're supposed to say. That's how we are supposed to respond. And in doing so, he flees like the coward that he is. That's how we overcome that's what, that's what it means, uh, being rescued from the power of darkness. Now, he'll try to convince you that you haven't been. He'll try to convince you that he is still in charge. He's not, not in our lives. He's not. Don't give him an inch. Don't give him any place. You know, the Bible talks about give the devil no place. Why? Why? Why do you think it says that? Because if you open up the door just a little bit, He's the master of deception. He's the master of reason. And it won't be long before you're listening to his nonsense and buying the lie. Nope, you shut the door and you immediately, the minute you recognize that this is contrary to God, I'm not entertaining it. Period. God was not confused when he said that I'm healed. God was not confused when he said that <clears throat> Jesus uh, uh, redeemed me from the curse of the law. 
No sense reasoning it and discussing it with the enemy or anybody else for that matter. Just agree with God. Trust him. And then power to believe, power will be available as you trust, as you trust. But you can't reason with him. He rescued us. We are not under his domain in any way, shape, or form. We've been rescued from the power of darkness, and we've been brought into the kingdom of his son, whom he loves. Thanks be to God, who always, 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 always gives us the victory. How does he give us the victory? He took care of it once and for all. How do we walk in it? Believe and receive it. Believe and receive it. Take it. Position yourself to it. Position himself. Position yourself. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God. All right. Well, I'm so thankful for his word today. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. What we're going to do next is talk a little bit about being in position to receive. You know, uh, I just kind of spoke on this a little bit. Uh, about being in a position to receive and what exactly that means. Well, we have to, uh, because, because healing was purchased for us all, it belongs to everyone. But not everyone or every person is in a position to receive this healing. Um, sometimes we have to be moved into that position. So what do I mean by that? Well, I used the illustration of the woman with the issue of blood. Now, she said to herself, if I could touch his garment, I'll be made whole. Now, if she left it at that and then didn't move herself into position, do you follow what I'm saying? There's additional steps. There's additional responsibility on our part, on our part. She moved herself into position. Now, moving yourself into position is going to require you to be willing to fight the fight of faith. It's also going to require you to be willing to not yield to how you feel or think about it or what your circumstances. It's also going to require you to be willing to overcome obstacles that will try to stop you. And what are those obstacles? Your mind, your feelings, your thoughts, people, the enemy, lies. All of these things are, are designed, clever designs, to get you to not move into position. Now, this woman could have came up with a bunch of reasons, valid reasons. doesn't matter whether they're valid or not. That's not the issue here. The issue is they're there to deter you from walking in what you've been promised. This is where we have to be uh, resolute and our commitment and our trust in God that I will do what his word says. Um, we, we, we spoke of this yesterday, and we used the illustration of taking medicine, medication. You know, you cannot say, I don't trust doctors anymore if you didn't follow the discharge papers. If your doctor said, this is what you need to do, this is, you need to follow up, here's what I'm prescribing, you need to do this on a regimen, bup, 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 and, and you refuse to do it, can you get mad at the doctor for it when you don't receive or attain the desired result? No, it's impossible. And we so clearly see that. We would, if someone said that to you, the first thing you'd say to them, well, did you, did you follow the instructions? Um, and if they said no, then you'd look at them and say, well, what did you expect? I, I, I wish we would be able to, and I believe we're getting there, uh, it's something, spiritually speaking, when you say that to somebody, well... Have you followed the instructions, God's instructions? Have you been taking your, his medicine every day? And they look at you like, no, God said he healed me. Yes, he did, but you have a part to play. You have a part to play. You have to follow his instructions. 
So uh, that's what we kind of related that. But this is similar to that. Moving yourself into a position. A position. Um, uh, we expect things to just fall on us. Brother Hagin used to say this all the time, like ripe cherries out of a tree. And God already made the provision for us, but we have a responsibility to play in it. And that responsibility is to, to act on what he said, to believe it, to receive it into our heart, to take it, to walk after it, to do what he said, to follow, honestly, to follow his instructions. And if we don't follow his instructions, we can't get mad at him over it because we're the fools. And you know, Proverbs says the fool rages in their has rage in their own heart and rages against God because of their own foolishness. And that's what the enemy does. He wants us to blame. He wants us to shift blame. He wants us to say that God is the one behind it. We need to be humble enough to realize that we need to push, put ourselves into the right place, into position to receive from him. There is no if you'll get it. It's when you get it. If you're in position, you'll get it. If that woman with the issue of blood, it's the will of God. Jesus was healing everybody. But if that woman did not step out beyond and overcome the obstacles that were in her way, if she didn't do so, she wouldn't have received what she was supposed to have, which was God's will for her to be made whole and restored. Now, here's another one, moving yourself into position. Uh, the paralyzed man, right? He moved himself into a position of faith. He overcame great obstacles and great odds. You know, the, the reason I'm saying this is because this is where we need to begin to see that there's a great responsibility that falls on us as a believer, as a believer. We do the same thing with our children. You've provided everything for them, but you do tell them you need to do this, this, and this if you want this and this. This is your part to play in it. We've already done ours, right? We've already done ours. Now, this is what you're responsible. People don't like that word, responsible. They don't want to have responsibility. They want to do this. Well, that's somebody else's job. Nope. If you're going to walk in provision and you're going to walk in the blessings of God, you have responsibility. And it's going to be according to your faith and you moving yourself into position and you taking your medicine and doing what you're supposed to in order for things to come to pass in your life, in your life. <clears throat> uh, and, 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 and we continue on with that. We continue on with that uh, and, and, and believing that we receive Believing that we receive according to what he said. According to what he has said. We believe we receive. So, uh, you know, just like salvation, right? Salvation belongs to the meanest person. <laughs> to the most ungodly person. And it's already been purchased for them. They just haven't accepted it yet. Some will. Some won't. Jesus died for him, for the worst sinner, just as much as he died for me. Why am I saved? Because I positioned myself to receive it. I followed the instructions in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart man believes, and with the mouth confession is made. Now, if I didn't follow those instructions, would I be saved? No. Does it mean that it wasn't possible for me to be saved? Does it mean that, 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 um, that God, it's not his will for me? No, he already purchased it for me. Can you see how we need to position ourselves? Now, how do we position ourselves? Well, number one, we have to believe God. Well, how are we going to get to a place of believing him if we haven't heard? This is why meditating in God's word, and I know we've certainly gone over this at great length, but meditating in God's word, putting that first place in our life, causes us to believe. Faith comes by hearing. Faith to step out and trust God. Being able to trust him comes by knowing and hearing what he said is ours. And so today, 
we have given ourselves a healthy dose of God's medicine. So when you walk around today and symptoms seem to be coming on you, you say, Father, I think that I've taken your medicine and my body is amending at this moment because your medicine is working in my life. It's manifesting in my life, and I'm getting better and stronger according to your word, according to the prescribed medicine of your word. You know, bring it right down to the natural, what we're used to and what we know. And then I want to close with this. Galatians chapter 6. This time has already slipped away, and I don't want to... uh, to jump into something else and then not have the time. (laughs) Glory to God. But I want us to look at this because this was rolling around in my heart as well. Being positioned, obviously, staying there, fighting the fight of faith, resisting the enemy and watching him flee. But Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, and I want to start in verse 8. Just a little bit before uh, verse 8. For for whatever a person sows, he will also reap. Because the one who sows to his flesh will reap destruction from the flesh. In other words, the one who will not assume responsibility and do follow the instruction, but rather put it on somebody else, will of that same thing reap not the benefit. But the one who sows to the Spirit, sowing to the Spirit, obeying, following the leading, following the instructions of the Spirit of God and His Word, will reap eternal life from the Spirit. And then he says this. So we know that if we sow to the flesh and we become weak and we we begin to doubt and wonder and all these things, we're not going to reap the benefit. If we'll sow to the Spirit and we'll follow and hunger after it, trusting Trusting the spirit of the spirit of God, following his instructions, we will receive the promise, eternal life. And then, he, and then this is the verse that I wanted us to see. And this is why he said this after that. Because the temptation to quit is always going to be there when we don't see it manifesting as quick as we want. But we believe in our heart that we've received the moment we've spoken it. Verse 9 says, Let us, he says this right after this, it comes right after verse 8. Let us not grow weary or get tired of doing good. For we will reap at the proper time in due season. And most people just leave it there. But there's an ending to that. And the ending, the caveat, if you will, is if we don't give up and quit. Now the enemy, through obstacles and lies... His whole endeavor is to get you to give up and quit, to let go and say, oh, I'm just going to let God. Nope, that's being weak and lazy. Let us not grow weary or get tired of doing good, for we will reap in due time, at the proper time, if we don't give up and quit. Friend, determine today that you will not give up and quit. You will sow to the Spirit. You will follow his instructions, and of those instructions and of the Spirit, you will reap the promise that God has already provided for 2,000 years ago. So lift your hands and thank him this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and be glad. And we thank you, Father, that your healing power is working in our lives today. Lord, I speak blessings over those who have heard this today. Strengthen them, sustain them. Father, I thank you that you're making us whole, spirit, soul, and body, according to your word, according to your will. You've sent Jesus, the word, to heal us to provide for us. You redeemed us from the curse of the law. You've given us salvation, which is all encompassing, health, prosperity, peace, eternal life. Father, we take it now. We keep the switch of faith turned on. And we say, Father, you be glorified. You be magnified. You be honored. in all that we say and do today, Father, bring glory to yourself. You deserve it. We thank you that our best days are in front of us. We love you, Lord, and we lift up your name today. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, I believe that we have received a healthy dose of his medicine. Keep that switch of faith turned on and enjoy the power that comes with it. Amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.